started recording. Um, and uh, right, we need to scribe. Seven people in this, and two of us are chairs. So if you're one of the five non-chairs in this meeting, I, I can take notes. Oh, Mathis. Say Thank sorry. you, Mathis. Thank you. you know, you should send Mathis some chocolate because this is like the second or third time he's agreed to do this. Did you not get any chocolate? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. I'll send you a gift card for a chocolate shop. What's you're in Munich, yeah? Well, well yeah, send Munich. me the name of like an amazing local chocolate shop in can just Munich. Munich in okay. So uh when last when when we met in person in Seattle, we discussed the time and location of the next hybrid interim. After a great deal of horse trading and negotiating, we came up with the dates of one to three October as the ideal date. So uh, that is not changing. However, we also agreed that some people were going to look into New York City uh, office in New York City. Uh, the general, the the main idea was for it to be on the East Coast, and some people seem to think that NYC was a good choice. Um, after running it down, uh, like it doesn't seem like there's an ideal option there um, for various reasons. It could be hard to get New York City office conference rooms, and then uh, I, I know Nokia had an option, but it turns out that New York City is Murray Hill, New Jersey, which is. Uh, uh, quite inconvenient for multiple reasons. Um, in particular, no hotels within walking distance of Bell Labs in in um, in Murray Hill, so it would be car rental city. That seems unpleasant. So um, we have uh, Will has graciously uh, offered to reserve a spot in Akamai headquarters in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which is across the street from uh, the Google office that we were at next year, last year. Um, that would certainly work. Uh, we haven't socialized this with a group before, so if somebody um, really doesn't want to go to Boston or um, has like, and and well, more importantly, has some other option uh, somewhere on the Eastern Seaboard of the United States for for this week, uh, we'd be wel I'd, I'd be welcome to um, entertain that. Does anyone want to comment on this right now? Okay, I'm going to send one last note to the list, and then uh, if I don't hear anything by the end of the week, then I'll tell Will to lock in the reservation, and we will, and then you can buy plane tickets uh, once that happens. Okay. And when you lock it in, can you also give me just some idea of the the numbers? We said 2025. Is that still the max? Um, I, that that has been this. I think 25 has been the historic maximum for participation, and I believe that's what I told the Google folks last time. And that's for the second two days. The improv day, we get like five people, right? Is We expect a similar. Maybe a few more than, I mean, there's maybe five people coding, but if I remember in Denver, we probably had 10 to 15. Okay. I mean, I, I mean our, our, our experience has been the interrupt day has often been the informal discussion day for a lot of people that don't have it. And there's a fair amount of like beer boff stuff happening that, that, um, is productive. So it's more than just who has, who has implementations frequently. And we have at least two participants that live in Boston. So I imagine they would come even if they don't have code to work on. Okay. So uh, not hearing any other comments about that, I am going to stop sharing and hand it off to Ian for the remainder of the meeting. Thank you. And thank you, Will, for um, setting up a, a place to to host uh, if we end up using it. Um, obviously, that would be very convenient for me um, since it's literally right across the street. Um, I can literally like almost look out this window and see it. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so I wanted to start with the PR that I opened about um, uh, max subscription ID. Um, initially, I didn't get too many comments. Uh, uh, do you? I'm sorry, Ian. But before you before you dive in further, um, sure. there are uh, I see thirteen participants and six people in the blue sheets. Uh, many you probably joined late. I just want to remind you that um, because we're not using Meet Echo, we need to manually do blue sheets. So there's a link in both the Zulip chat and in the Google Meet chat to the notes page. Please go in there and sign the blue sheets if you've not done so already. Thanks. Go ahead, Ian. You know, you know, I'm going to add you because you're talking, but <laughs> okay, yeah, I. But everyone else do that. Yeah. <laughs>
Ian? Yes. Sorry, I'm just trying to I'm trying to set up my presentation setup, which ah. is slightly different from when I'm at home because I'm trying to use uh this. It told us that it signed into some device. So it might yep. Oh, wonderful. No. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's possible that there are other things we should uh, discuss after Max subscriber ID, since it looks like actually a number of new PRs are out there. Um, I guess the first question is kind of, is is this the right direction? It seems like where we're going uh, when we're in Vancouver. Um, I will note that for those of you who uh, remember discussions about role, that like if we had Max subscribe ID and Max announce ID, like the role concept kind of gets obviated because you just like never increase it beyond zero. So like, that's kind of a nice fallout of this general approach, but um, that's Alan, good work. I just saw that comment and just, uh, you since announce is not required to publish, I'm not sure restricting the number of announces, but subscribe is required to publish. So I, I, I'm not sure that strictly, strictly limiting announces is, like the yeah. same thing as being declarative about what you can do. So I'm right. not sure we can get rid of role, but right. yeah. That's fine. That was, I'm not, I'm not invested in that idea. I just thought it, it would be nice if that was true because the role thing's a little wonky. Um, and I would, yeah. on a separate issue, I think we could get rid of role anyway. Uh, it You have to set protections on your server for people publishing when you're not expecting them to. They can do that with the protocol. So just because you know, they send a flag saying I'm not, all the good people say I'm not going to publish, but then the bad ones publish anyway, you're going to have to protect yourself from that. So I, I, don't, I don't see the necessity for negotiating it up front. Yeah, I guess I don't understand. I mean, like, as a relay, I just simply don't subscribe to what's, I mean, I not, I could just drop announces on the floor, right? There's no, I don't uh, have to take any action at all. Sure. Sure. Um, Are there, I mean, maybe people just need more time to read this. And if so, that's fine. And we can move on to. Um, it, it's pretty short. Oh, and, and can you just short. summarize it or maybe just show us? Oh, I mean, sure. What is, is there a default limit? No, it's um, you communicate the initial limit in the handshake. Um, and then obviously, if you exceed the limit, then you know your connection gets closed. Um, the. There's a new max subscribe ID setup parameter in the handshake. Um, and with, yes, and then there's a frame called max subscribe ID, which allows you to raise the max subscribe ID. Um, so this is very, it's very similar to the quick design, basically. Luke. Does this require, so we, we don't really have the subscribe state machine, if I remember. Um, do you explicitly have to unsubscribe in order to like stop using this flow control, or how do we how do we know a subscription's ended? That's what I'm trying to say. How how do you get more credit? Yeah, um, I, I I mean I, at the moment that's kind of implementation to put like dependent, right? Like some implementation could decide they want to let you do 100 subscriptions and never never more than number 99 ever again or something. So I don't. I mean, again, this is similar to Quick, where if you decide never to increase max stream ID, then you know you never get to open any more streams. So, uh, well, yeah, two questions: Is this this is absolute count, right, to mirror yes. quick, quick behavior? So it's yes, it is literally the so closing old ones doesn't help you. Right, exactly. It, it changes nothing, at least directly. There's no. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 yeah, and it simplifies all the state machine stuff. Like, is this closed or not? That that's why Quick does it that way. It's just much easier to to reason about and and write down. Then, so, what's the mechanism for negotiating more? Should you need them, or your your own? I mean, the expectation is that if you close subscriptions, that you'll get the ability to open new ones, right? I mean, but we just said that wasn't happening. It's an absolute count, so it doesn't matter if the old ones are closed or open. It's just a count that's triggered on on new subscribes. Oh, but, but the idea is the peer is sending you a new max subscribe ID frame with a higher number in it. And so now, you know, you could open 105 subscriptions instead of 100 because 
you know, maybe you've closed like the first time you opened. And how does the peer know to send you this frame? Do you have to ask for it? Do you ask for something and it responds or? No, it just like this is, I mean, this is very much a flow control sort of mechanism. So um, the idea is it's allowing you to open more based on it's like whatever its resource situation is. So um, I think Mo is next. Um, yeah, I, I get that you're trying to mirror the quick mechanisms. I'm not sure they're good uh, because uh, in our context, you know, it seems like the, 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 in a quick context, the two sides of the application typically have an understanding of what's going to happen. But in our context, these realists have no idea what kind of traffic this application is about to blast. And so some applications, we only need two or three, some may need 100 subscribes. And having, you know, a default in the relay, and actually, I thought, I thought I saw some text that the default is zero. Um, so how would a relay even uh, intelligently set this? But my, my, my concern is that how, how would the how would the subscriber uh, know in, in any way to, to flow control? So what is the expectation of the subscriber? If I want to make a thousand subscriptions, right? You know, I have no idea what the dynamics of the relay are. And there's no protocol mechanism to even understand, even if it's declarative, even if I can't ask for it, I have no idea what the algorithm and the relay is going to be. Is it when when I get to half of his limit, he's going to give me another half? Um, that's what I hate about the quick mechanism. It's it's so um, inferring what the implementation on the other side is with no real deterministic way to figure out what I should do. I mean, in practice, the quick mechanism seems to have worked rather fine, but I, I kind of, I mean, I get your your point, but yeah. I, I, I guess I guess I don't understand that objection because the subscriber, the subscriber doesn't infer anything, right? It's it's the sender's, the sender is restricted number of subscriptions, which is pro presumably, I mean, obviously it's driven by by sender resources. It's also driven by like the properties of the, of the tracks it's serving, right? Like there's some yeah, number of- When you say sender, I mean, we're really talking about the relay, right? The, 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 end, the end point is talking to a relay usually. Right. So it's the relay that signaled this to the, and the relay has no idea the dynamics of the traffic. The relay is not part of the application. The application is the two endpoints and the origin server, but the relay network has no idea what the actual application is. So it doesn't know how many streams are gonna happen. In a typical quick connection, the two ends are the application. So they they kind of know what what's going to happen here. I know I'm, I'm an HTTP server and I'm a HTTP client. Okay, I, I know what's going to I know what's likely to happen. But for this, there's no way for a relay to know whether I should expect to get a three or four stream subscriber or a 400 stream subscriber. Imagine if it's a relay, relay to relay. How do I know if this is a relay and it's, he's going to send me a thousand subscribes or he's an endpoint? He's only going to send me two or three subscribes. No, you, don't, you don't need to know, right? All you do is you, this is just a mechanism. You as a relay might start off with a with five, and as soon as the people ask for more, you check your resources. There's no like, asking for more. There, there, there's no message right. asking so, for more. So uh, this and is the other point I wanted to make. So, so is a request for more, right? And then you would decide if you want to release more or not. Well, I'm sorry, well, I missed it. What's what's the request for more? The the the, the new subscription is essentially a request, a signal that the 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 client would like another subscription. It's an explicit signal for that. No, no, no. I, I saw. I read that it's a protocol error if you subscribe for that, and you would get a closed connection. Your entire, your entire. No, 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 no. So, like, so, so, I say my max subscribe ID is five, and the subscriber sends me a subscription ID four. Then it's used up all the resources that I've given it. And so, if I want to give it any, if I have the resources to like potentially accommodate more, they should grant it at least five more subscri subscribe IDs. But that, that's that's like implicit in the implementation of your peer. You, yes. You are making a guess based on the implementation of your peer. Right. What, well, what so I mean, if, if, if I want to implement a functional relay, then then like clearly I need to have some mechanism to say the subscriber needs more resources if I have them. I mean, if, if we really like in quick, there's a there's a blocked message. We could in fact create like a subscribe ID blocked message if we really think that like relay is going to mess this up and subscribers need to explicitly request more. I, I don't think, I think we, I think relay guys are going to do the right thing. And, and this is not actually going to be a problem in practice, but uh, I, I, I'm not, I wouldn't die on the hill on the hill of like, I'm not going to lie down on the road over not having a blocked message. If people were really uncomfortable with this. Yeah. 
my, my biggest problem with the current design is a relay knowing whether or not its peer is a relay or a client to set the limit intelligibly. If, if, if a client is throttled at say five subscribes per second or whatever the default limit is and relay, that seems okay. But if a peer relay is blocked to that and he's trying to do a thousand subscribes, it doesn't make sense to me to, to throttle that relay for, you know, minutes or, or whatever, because, because your, your increment is based on some, you know, reasonable client limit versus what a reasonable relay limit would be. Can you do it based on the authentication in the setup message? I mean, like, I, because we, we, we wouldn't want a, a, a client to just say, oh, I'm a relay, so give me 2,000 subscriptions no, with no authentication. So if, if, if like, if I'm a CDN in my, my downstream relay, I, I'm probably going to have some auth info that says, oh, by the way, I'm one, of, I'm one of us, like, give me more. And yes, you can have, you can have 2,000 subscriptions because we're, we trust each other. I guess my question for you, Mo, is do you have an, I hear that you don't like this. Do you have an alternate proposal? Um, I, you know, I think the other side being a max subscribe ID request or something like that would make sense. And then, um, you know, not waiting for a peer implementation decision, an explicit signal from the, from the subscriber saying, I need to make 400 subscriptions. And maybe there's an auth token or something along with that that says, you know, or maybe it has to happen after a prior subscription was authorized or something like that. Yeah. But I mean, this implicit based on a peer's implementation seems seems really dicey to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to let Victor go because I think you've had your hand up the longest, Victor, and I don't know what, but please. Hello. Please uh, yeah, I think this is definitely an improvement of our current situation which is the current situation is like if i have a limit of 100 subscriptions per client if client will subscribe i will just send subscribe error so this kind of tells client ahead that they cannot subscribe uh, uh of course like the alter the only alternative to those kind of approaches is like not have uh, any limit, which I don't think works, which is a bad idea. Uh, uh, I guess uh, that's a, the, this PR just makes perfect sense. Uh, I think it's definitely an improvement. Now, there are some practical differences as to why uh, the flow control in... Uh, MOQT is different from flow control in something like HTTP free. So in HTTP free, you typically try to send requests and then you send them and then the reply comes back. And this is kind of built on the idea that we have some default, which is like 100 requests. Uh, and the expectation is typically is that most of those will be immediately processed. Uh, in MOQTs, this is uh, very different because it is perfectly reasonable for me to have 1,000 subscribes that are active at a single time if almost all of those track generate like one message per minute or something. So the, that is one use case that people should think instead of blindly setting limit to something that sounds reasonable but might not be reasonable in practice. And I believe that we should document those considerations. Uh, but this is, should not preclude merging this because this is definitely a step in the right direction. Uh, well, yeah. Why there at line uh, 1702, if you send one more subscribe than you meant to, you might have said 10 and you said the 11th and it says you should close the whole session, right? Which kills okay. all your other subscriptions. Why yeah. don't we just deny the subscribe and allow the existing subscriptions? It's a lot easier to find you have an implementation bug if you kill the session. I mean, in my experience, that's, that's why I said it. It's... But you're going to get a subscribe error with a clear message saying you can't send any more subscribes, but you shouldn't have to kill the whole session to communicate that. No, 
we should because it's a protocol violation. Yeah, I mean, it's it's violating a must, and usually, I mean, in general, like, I mean, yeah, I agree that we could close it with an error, but in general, like, if you have a must and it's enforceable, closing the connection uh, with an error code like makes it much much easier to find like your implementation error. Like, someone was resetting our QBAC streams the other day in our uh, I XP3 implementation. We never ever in a million years would have noticed if it hadn't been the fact that the connection got closed with like a like special error. Yeah, I think it's gonna make it difficult for applications to build fault tolerant systems when the mechanism by which the number of subscribes extends can get into a race condition, right? You've you allocated five, you've made the fourth, the server decides I'm gonna up you, but while it's the message saying I'm gonna up you is coming, you send another in-flight subscribe and now your whole session is terminated. Well, but you shouldn't send it. Be, you should not be sending the uh, the sender of the max subscribe ID increases its max when it sends it, and the receiver must receive it by definition after that. And so you're not supposed to use the higher number until you receive a max subscribe ID frame. So it it should not be racy. Like it should be. It should be quite easy to avoid ever violating this must. Okay. So. Um. Martin, yeah, so I, I just that as a chair, might I propose that, um, I mean, I, I want to acknowledge Mo's concerns and wanting some sort of request mechanism. Can we land, would anyone object to landing this and filing a separate issue for a, like a, a request more mechanism? You, I mean, I'm not, I'm not convinced we need one, but I'm not going to, I'm I'm not, like I said, I'm not straight, I wouldn't strenuously object to one. Go ahead, Mo. Just to clarify, I, I I don't necessarily favor another separate message to say request. The whole mechanics of it, I think, could be simpler if we just had logical responses to subscribe. You know, I think this blow up the whole session. Uh, you know, answer is is not the right answer. Why do we need any machinery at all? Why don't we just say the name? If a, if 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 a server wants the flow control a subscribe, it just responds back with, you know, you know, subscribe flow control, and maybe even a you know time when to come back. You know, flow control you know, 500 milliseconds or something. And so the endpoint knows, okay, my subscribes are rejected, but maybe I can try again in 500 milliseconds. Um, we don't necessarily need to mimic exactly what Quick does here because I, I think the awareness of the two endpoints of each other's application is 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 not as clear in, in mock. Uh, I think Will and then Luke. Yeah. Just quick comment that in web transport for the W3C API, we did actually invent a message. We have the same communication with the max stream count. We did invent a hint from the client to say, I need 10,000 streams. And then that helps the server ramp up its max count appropriately to meet the client's demands. And it, it, we, could, we could contemplate something similar here. Yeah. Uh, Luke. Uh, I'm just going to say the quick flow control works pretty well once you've implemented it. I, I know it sounds weird on paper, and it definitely does. And the fact that it's just a single absolute value that you send, the publisher sends every so often. Um, I would break down the proposals, especially like Mo. Like I think waiting 500 milliseconds and trying again is, is terrible. <laughs> For example, I'm just going to flat out. Um, so please write down other ways we can do flow control. I think what Will said is a good idea, like a hint of what I could use. End of the day, you're still going to send this max subscribe ID, though. You're still going to say, like, I don't care that you're going to send 1,000. You can only send 200 right now. Um, so I think that this is still the mechanism you would use. Um, and uh, yeah, I think the way forward here is is write down some alternatives, because this works really well and quick. I've implemented it. Um, and I do like how it, it is a fatal error as well. So I, I want to, so there's, there's two separate questions here. It's like, what, like, what subscriber side stuff do we need to do? given this max subscribe ID thing. But I, but I think the, the first order question we need to address is Mo's, which is like the alternative proposal here is to is to not have like any sort of explicit flow control message. And just like when you request when you subscribe too much, you get a subscribe error of some kind that says, you know, too many subscriptions. Um, and that that is certainly like a logically viable way to do it. And I, 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 I can we can we focus the session on that first? Because that's kind of the that's the first order bit on this proposal. If people if people actually like that proposal, as it, prefer that proposal to this one, besides Mo, it would be a good time to to say so.
No one's raising their hand. Mo, did I articulate your position correctly? Yes, I think that would be an equivalent mechanism if you just a reasonable error on response of, of subscribe or subscribe okay error, a subscribe error, you know, flow control. Yeah. So I think that isn't, I mean, it's sort of the same as the, it, the, the relay can still do that but tell the peer when it's going to happen in advance, right? And that's the, I think that's what Luke was trying to articulate is like the value of setting this idea. Idea is like, every relay is gonna have some kind of limit and you set it in advance and the subscriber can know and say like, oh, I'm about to be blocked versus subscribe, oh, it blew up, I'll now what to do. Um, so I think that's maybe where, like having this mechanism which is like maybe a little chattier but that's what it offers it, it doesn't have to blow up right you could just if you knew nothing you make one more subscribe and it says rejected flow control and that's it everything else keeps on working that would work yeah, but you still have no idea when it's going to happen but you could have an idea like if the people don't need to know what's going to happen you make your new subscribe and it happens right Do yeah but and, and, and then what will like do you just keep retrying until magically it lets you through maybe you it's do it's really maybe nice if it tells you right if it tells you the next subscribe will work now by sending a new max subscribe id but what do you do when your session gets disconnected by the same argument right you reconnect and now i mean we're not being prescriptive about what to do when, when resources are, are scarce on the server here uh, victor as a client i would stop making new subscriptions and throw an error to my user interface or something like that, but I wouldn't necessarily start again. I don't think we need to tell people it. Uh, I hear there are suggestions uh, for uh, rejecting subscribes with uh, uh, error messages. And I believe those are genuinely bad because we tried that with HTTP2 and we got the rapid reset bug, which was very unpleasant. So I think we will risk getting the same thing here if we don't ship uh, the quick style flow control. Uh, and uh, I don't see any reason to not ship it. This is what we shipped in quick. It has proven to work extremely well. Uh, it works definitely better than anything else we attempted before. Uh, and. It's arguably a bit over-engineered because Max, because all of our control messages are ordered and uh, this even does not require that, but other than that, I think this works really well. Uh, Martin and Alan? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm out. Oh. Alan. I just wanted to, the Victor's point about rapid reset, I think is the exact reason not to do it the way you're proposing Mo, which is that like, a bad actor just says subscribe forever and you end up having to have a rate limiter on the other side saying like, yeah, oh, I, this guy's I, making I, too many bad requests. I need to close it versus the behavior that's defined here, which is like, I told you how many you could have. If you go over without me giving you more, you're gone. And um, although I think we still maybe have the and that and we this also solves the problem with subscribe unsubscribe. So even if I give you a limit of one, you subscribe, unsubscribe, and you're always at one versus I can like be a little bit more clever about how I, when I bump your number. So you can't just send me a packet full of subscribe, unsubscribes. I, I acknowledge that it makes sense. Uh, I, I agree we should keep. Um, yeah, I think we should have a, a, good, a good talk about overall protection mechanisms. Um, I'm not convinced that this adds uh, any protection because we have a single control channel. And so if the, if, the, if the DOS vector is forcing your peer to process control messages, we have a single control channel. It's your, yeah, I could send this out thousand subscribes for the same ID, right? And I force you to, to, to tell me that, oh, that's a duplicate, it's a du or, or it's, it's, just, it's the same. So, yeah. so I, I think there's a, it's a good point that we should have a good focus on you know, DOS or, or, you know, rate limits in general about how the protocol could be abused. Um, but I don't think this mechanism does anything to prevent any abuse. So I, I will say like, um, I, 
going back to rapid reset, I mean, if you expend any work whatsoever executing a subscription, and you can send, um, say, 100 or so subscriptions in a single packet, um, because you basically like do, I mean, there's a few ways of like arranging the messages, but nonetheless, basically, like one packet of uh, data causes the peer to do like what could be a very substantial amount of work. Um, such as send kind of subscribes upstream and such. That's basically like what rapid reset was. And it was it was pretty bad. Um, I mean, like, I don't know, like, I don't know what our QPS numbers were, but I thought they were something like 300 million QPS that we were seeing in DOS attacks. I mean, it was a lot. Like, it, th these things, these things are a little bit scarier than I might have previously anticipated. So, I don't know. Anyway. Just add that, uh, Victor. Yeah, I think that's a good point. That like sending duplicate subscribe ID should be a fatal error. Uh, I mean, that, this makes this easier too because yeah, and right now there's not actually a requirement that you your subscribe IDs are sequential or in any side range. I don't think, and we can make them sequential because all our, our control messages are ordered. Yeah. I realize that after I said I think that. Mo's point about we should take a holistic approach to analyzing control message DOS attacks is probably also valid. Like, yeah. because there's, as we just identified one, and there's probably like 10 more because we haven't looked in this space and we know that we need to do that. Yep. Yeah, um, no, I think I think there's, there's more work to be done here. Um, this one probably is the most obvious one because it's pretty clear that the relay in a lot of circumstances, would have to do a decent amount of work to service a subscribe. But yeah. So, Alan, do you think it's time for a show of hands? Uh, do we have yeah. enough people? Well, I mean, I guess we can. Uh, I mean, so I, 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 I mean, I, I, we're going to have to take it to the list, but I sense that at least in this room, we have rough consensus with apologies to Mo, but, but maybe that's wrong, or maybe a bunch of people don't care. So uh, using the little raise hands tool here on Google Meet, um, raise your hand if you would like to see an, exp so again, we're separating out the issue of whether there's some sort of client hint mechanism, that's a second order thing. Um, whether we should have a, so the choices are gonna say like, do you support a max subscribe ID type mechanism? Do you support a just, just cause subscribe errors when you go over whatever the internal limit is? Or uh, the third option is, I don't know, I need to hear more. I need to have more discussion. OK, so the first option is, do you prefer a max subscribe ID type uh, solution? Raise your hand now if you think so. Is anyone um, fumbling with the, please say something if you are currently fumbling with the interface. Okay, uh, please let them in it so that seven people favor th that kind of mechanism. You can lower your hands now. Raise your hand if you favor a subscribe error based mechanism. Anyone fumbling with the interface, please say so now and unmute yourself when you do it. Okay, two. Uh, who would like to hear? Or please lower your hands. Thank you. Uh, who would like to hear more discussion on this topic? Okay, so I guess we're pretty much locked in our decisions. All right, seven to two. Oof. Um, I guess Al and I should talk about this offline, but it sounds like we got to go to the list and see what people think. Um, well, yeah, I think we'd have to do that anyway. A few opinionated people are not here. Um, yeah. It, you know, and if they all came in on the same side as Mo, it'd be like seven five or seven six. Like right, right, right. Uh, yes. That, that would change it if it stayed. And roughly seven two, I think that meets rough consensus. You know, okay. the seven to two ratio seems like rough consensus. But just to we, clarify, I'm, I'm not deadly opposed to this. I, I I think the holistic approach of control message, you know, attacks um, would be better. You know, to to flush out whether this mechanism provides the protection. If I could, I could be convinced that this provides great protection if we actually analyzed all those and said, oh yeah, it's. You know, this is the way that that you actually would protect yourself as a as a publisher. Um, I'd be fine with it, but I'm not convinced. 
Yeah. Fair enough. Um, thanks. So I, I don't think it's worth it to keep um, drilling on this PR at this point, Ian. So I don't know if you got another one because uh, we kind of have to solve the fundamental issue on whether. Okay. This so approach just, is correct. just as a chair question, are we? Do you want to just send a quick and it's consensus call on the list? Be like we. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I can summarize the well. I, I can summarize the question, and I think people can chime in with their points if they want to chime in with their points. I'm not going to do that like in real time, but I also. I mean, it. yeah, I think that's fine. I, I think maybe just, I'm. Is there anyone opposed to the concept that we also need to do like a broader, at some point, doesn't have to be now, but a broader analysis of control message DOS attacks? I think everybody's sort of aware of that. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I mean that's fine. I, I mean, as an individual, I, I would like us to like not hold all mechanisms that have DOS implications until that analysis is I, done. I, I'm, I'm uh, like, I'm as a, both as an individual, I agree, agree, and as a chair, I agree that like I, my thought is like we have kind of gotten to a place where we have fit like we have a lot of issues and it would help us make progress as a group if we just pin down a few corners as they go rather than keeping things open for a long time we can always revisit them later if we we know we're going to come back if we do yeah. a whole analysis and everything's gone but like there seems to if there's consensus on the list that this seems in the right direction like we don't need to wait for the whole thing and to move cool. forward mo um yeah the, i think in the pr and the question to the list i think you should make it clear about the the significant semantic change in what subscribe id is now if it's enforced to be a monotonic counter starting at zero or something, um, I think that's you know something everybody needs to be aware of and make sure that they're not designing applications that you know that um, that have any issue with that. I don't think that's right, I, good, but it's important. I, 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 I'm going to try to capture like capsule arguments here. I'm probably going to do a bad job, so please like please chime in on the thread uh, when on whatever I failed to failed to point out. Sure. Thank you, everyone. Um, I did have actually um, wanted to go to one of the slides that I made uh, for Vancouver. Um, hey, Ian, I'm sorry. I want to. I got to interrupt one more time. Sure. Um, so uh, there are ten people that have signed the blue sheets: me, Alan, Daniel, Mathis, Will, Luke, Ian, Mo, Eric, and Dinesh. There are fifteen of you in the call. I think, unless I'm unless there's something weird with with conference room. So once again, in both the Zulip and in the Google Meet chat, there's a link to the blue sheets. Please go into the blue sheets, type your name and your affiliation. If we can't do this, then we're going to end up with like, we're going to have to go back to Meet Echo. And I don't know if people want that. Thank Martin, you. I think it's the system is counting like room devices twice. So Ian Swift is. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm on here twice. Okay. Yeah. So there are 13 then. I think so. you and Ian, Ian, Ian's in three times because his presentation counts as one, and then you're in twice. So I think okay. there's maybe only one or two people missing. And all right. Well, it looks like we just got Victor, which is good. Um, maybe all right, I'll, I'll look. I'll look at it, and I'll. I'll. I'll yeah, okay. Continue. Sorry. Thank you. Um, okay. So we currently, though we discuss quick streams quite a bit. Um, we don't actually have very much text about them at all. Um, I think this is, I found the one paragraph that I think is basically like the majority of uh, the text we have on kind of how streams are used most, like the object mapping sort of stuff. Um, and I know there are a number of open questions about like, what does fin mean and things like that. But I'm wondering, are there normative statements that should be added that we all kind of already agree on today to the text? Um, like. Question one is a very obvious one to me is like, if a subscription is canceled or data is expired, should the publisher like reset the stream? It seems like intuitively, I would think yes. And we might want to put that in there, but like, um, I guess I'm trying to think like, we don't need to solve everything about streams, but you know, it'd be nice to have a little more normative text about how they're used than we have today. This is kind of my, my thinking. Um, and with that, Victor. Uh, related to what you said, but not directly to the questions on the slide, uh, I said I was trying to write a fetch proposal and I brought a PR today. Uh, one of the things that we should do is uh, split. Uh, currently, we have a section called messages and it merges messages on control streams with messages and data streams. 
uh, and I think we should stop doing that. I wrote a PR that splits the sections, and I think we should, like, after that, at some point, renumber our uh, string types. Uh, so, because currently, like, the way at least our code was initially written is we can handle any message anywhere. Uh, but this doesn't really make sense. You should not be receiving objects and control strings, and you should not be receiving control messages on the uh, data stream. Uh, okay. And that, that's this PR that I just have open. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, I well, want to hear if people agree or disagree, because the, the, this seems to be like intuitively a step, something that makes a lot of sense. Sure. And so to, to give me a, an overview and us an overview. Um, instead of messages, there are now control messages and uh, data. Okay. But and the, there are people pointing out that we might also want to spread like data streams and datagrams separately. Yeah. Or at least merge the syntax for uh, object stream and object datagram since they are identical. But just to uh, clarify, as written, this. This PR is entirely editorial. It does not that's change the wire image at all. Uh, almost, yeah. It, it's kind of like, technically, it means that like things that were previously illegal because you're not allowed are now illegal because they're unknown message IDs, but that's very, yeah. OK, that makes sense. So they're still illegal, but like the, the reason is subtly different. Um, yeah, okay. uh, it, it does not matter in practice. OK. Thank you for the review. Uh, Will. Yeah, clarifying question. So a control stream is a bidirectional stream, right? And mm -hmm. the statement was made that data is sent on unidirectional streams. But what if I'm a client and I open up my control stream and then I open another bidirectional stream and I use the send, my send side of that to publish data? Is that illegal? Currently, that is illegal in the spec. It, in the spec, we say we can't do that. It must be yeah. unidirectional. Yeah. OK. Right. Yep. Uh, um, I, I support this, this split. Um, I would even go further and split the spaces themselves so that on a bidirectional stream, there's only one space for the control messages and for, uh, message ID space for the data streams, for the, for the unidirectional data streams. There's only, there's a separate, con, totally separate space. So then there's no list of all messages combined. It's object oh. could be zero, subscribe could be zero. Yeah, it, it does split the namespaces, but it doesn't renumber them. Yeah, I, I think Victor was suggesting as a follow-up to renumber them just to kind of make this digestible. But but yeah, no, I, I think you're, yeah, I would agree with you, Mo, as an individual. Uh, Luke, next? I'm, I can't remember. Yeah, I had a PR for this at one point, so I support it. Uh, definitely renumber, because stream header group is two bytes right now. <laughs> it's the most common one, so. Oh, yeah, uh, we get to fix that bug. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be great if it didn't start with a uh, OX5. Uh, yeah, two things. Number one, welcome, Mike. Um, please, uh, first of all, uh, go to the, if you look at the meet chat there, uh, sign the blue sheets if you haven't already. Um, uh, my comment on this as an individual is, yeah, I, I like this. I, I like having the separate spaces uh, so you can't even express the messages in the wrong stream. Uh, and uh, this will be a huge pain to implement properly, <laughs> um, but like it would have been way better to implement it this way in the first place. Um, so I think we're at the stage where like that, you know, we should make that kind of change. Agreed. Okay. In that case, then I, I think Victor, we, we probably all think this is a good direction. Um, I have not taken a close look at it yet, but um, let's those who want to review this take a review time to review it. Ideally, soonish and. So that will, I think, unblock. Because you have another PR that you want to write that's going to be blocked on this one, right, Victor? Uh, I'm not sure if it's actually blocked, but I expect it to be blocked, so. I mean, I would just say, like, can we just merge this today? Like, somebody just review it, stamp it, merge it. Like, yes. There's no there's no opposition here. Let's just move forward. I, I'll, I'll merge it by the end of the day. That sounds good. OK. Do, do you want to just, since we have 10 minutes left, should we maybe pick up some of the uh, any of the other open PRs is there like maybe sure. ALPN and version negotiation that looks like a nice one that I think somebody did already approve like should we just uh, here? wait just wait so done. I'm sorry did, did we did we finish the stream semantics no, we sort of a, Victor sort of a, abandoned it but I don't know if we want to come back to that um, or we want to go through PRs instead 
I have one process question. Is this a two hour long interim or a one hour? No, one. one hour. You have 10 minutes. Then in that case, uh, yeah, let's do the, let's look at ALPM. That's a great idea. Thank you. All right. So I wrote this up um, because someone kindly told me that Web Transport has an ALPN feature. Um, we discussed this a long time ago when we kind of got stuck up against the fact that AL, ALPN did not exist in Web Transport. So we weren't really sure if like we could rely on it or not. Um, the intent here is to use ALPN for version negotiation instead of the existing setup mechanism um, because it's a known mechanism and it allows us to remove some text as well as some um, functionality. But uh, thoughts on this? Uh, Luke, go for it. Uh, is this deployed yet? Mm -hmm. Is this deployed? Like, it, Victor, does Chrome support it? Is probably does Chrome support it at least? Uh, that's a Victor question. Uh, the answer is not yet. Uh, so can know. we wait until it does? Because <laughs> interrupt is not going to work otherwise. That is a practical concern. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, I, I think the shipping is currently blocked on the bike shed of whether we want to call those protocols or sub protocols. Didn't we figure that out in IETF? Possibly. Yeah, I think. That was oh, that's right. You weren't there. Protocol. Eric was wearing a Victor hat. Uh, that was consensus to use protocol instead of sub. Yeah, I think sub protocol is no. ALPN was no. Sub was no. It was consensus to use protocol. Okay, so so I, I if I can just capture the group consensus is this is great. Let's do this, but we will not actually merge it until Victor is done implementing it in Chrome. And it ships so that people can use it. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Victor, yeah. get that done. <laughs> Everybody wants this. Yeah. Luke? Yeah, just one more. I haven't read the PR. Um, just as long as we can offer multiple versions. That's that's like the only requirement. But I think this is good. This remo We could possibly even just remove the setup um, uh, round trip altogether with this. There are other things currently in setup, like potentially off and and uh, other Extension things. Extension so, negotiation is a separate message for other reasons, I think. But yeah, I, that's fair. Like, I think the protocol version is the one requirement before you can start sending messages, right? Like you could have everything else be async, but you definitely you just have to know the version before you can send anything like an off message. So I will. Um, okay, wonderful. I guess I will park that. Can you park? Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Read my mind. Cool. Okay. Well. Um, Are there any other open PRs that we can make progress on in eight minutes? Um, Alan, you. Oh, were... you know, there's a very short one in there. Remove normative restriction on relays forwarding decision input. Uh, I think that's pretty much done. I made this. Text suggestion, but uh, you don't have to accept. I it. mean, you're the editor. Make your text suggestion and merge it. But in, just in case anybody wanted to weigh in, it pre like the. I think somebody said like we should not. Be overly prescriptive about how relay what relays can take into account when forwarding. Like we have, we said like if you get something, you forward it. Like that's already in the draft, yep. and there was a statement in there that said like. It can only look at the object headers, but I think the intent was like, you shouldn't be assuming that you can look at the payload because the payload will sometimes be encrypted. Um, it, relays must not depend on object payload content for making forwarding decisions. Um, yes, and I agree that that's overly restrictive. So I just like added some text about how you must forward it subject to like all the other stuff we've added recently. Uh, so Clarifying a question here. We, I foresee a need when we have something like a distribution network that the very outermost relay, we want to function more like an application server. We want to do some special things because it's talking to the end subscriber. Yeah. And in that case, it might indeed not forward objects. The example might be advertising insertion. This client doesn't get the primary stream. Instead, I substitute objects that are the advertising. So do we call that thing a relay? and it has special permissions, or is that thing not a relay? And if it's not a relay, then what is it? Because I think we definitely need it, and I worry that we, we set requirements on relays 
but they're just nodes in a transmission chain, but not all of them are the same. Um, I will note that this text does still keep the matching subscribers qualification. So, I mean, if it's not forwarding it, it could be because it's not a matching subscriber, but anyway. Um, right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mo? Yeah, I, I think uh, I think this was intended to capture that the content may be end -end encrypted. Um, so maybe we should just be explicit about that and say, um, you know, uh, I don't think it's a pro prohibition to do anything, you know, inspect the content, the content in any way, make a decision based on the content anyway. But there should be something like uh, informative, not normative, just saying that the content may be encrypted. Um, and so don't. That's already there. It's in section two point one. It actually has a lowercase may, and I almost changed it to can. Um, but yeah, that's exactly why I think this is sort of redundant with that. Like it already says like, yeah, like you may not be able to see it. If you don't have the keys, you won't. So don't make assumptions kind of. Yeah, then, then I'll strike that sentence then. But to, to Will's uh, point about um, things that are like on the you know, fringe, they're not really, they're, they're not just relays. They have other application logic in them. Um, but they're not full endpoints. They're not like we have a typical example right now that we're struggling with. The conference server in, in media conferencing is not a relay and is not a full endpoint because we actually want it to not have the keys. Uh, so we have this, you know, this other category of, <laughs> of thing now that is doing forwarding, doing relaying, but also expecting the relay network to do parts of that distribution not having access to the keys so it's not looking at object messages but it's clearly doing a lot more logic than we would ever expect the relay to do so i don't know if we we definitely have that concept in a lot of different applications i don't know if we need to call it out in the spec but we should be aware of it and we should decide whether or not we need to have a name for things like that and they're basically things that embed relays but and also have other functions beyond just the relay my my personal inclination would, would be to add text about those things once like MOQT needs to add features to support them. But I completely agree that those exist and those are a very real thing. And yeah, those need to exist. But anyway, pardon. Yeah, I mean plus one to Mo. I mean, I think that I think this is a improvement. Um I like I, I I'm a little scared of that must. I wonder if we're not if there's something we're missing here, but um I, I think this is fine. Push it, just merge it. Sure. I'm going to merge In it. In the past, sometimes we have used these weasel words that say must, unless you have yeah. application specific information. Yeah. <laughs> so we could always throw one of those in there if somebody wants. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm glad we softened the language about inspecting because I think this is a case of relay is going to do what relay is going to do. And like if the stuff is unencrypted and people are going to do stuff, like <laughs> stop them. But yes, yes you should tell people like don't count on it because you're gonna you know you you're gonna end up breaking if you rely on that. Yep. Okay, right, I'm just waiting for all right. I will merge this later. I'm just waiting for the checks to clear to make sure I didn't mess anything up. Um, that means we are very close. Don't need any that. admin time, but if there's something you can do in two minutes, uh, yep. go for uh, it. The subscribe namespace works just, subscribe it. namespace is like maybe has some more heavy discussion than we can cover Perfect. in three minutes but if people Perfect. want a preview of what i did here i can talk about it and then i, I, I actually would love a one minute preview yes okay um what the subscribe namespace pr does is it changes the definition of track namespace currently it is a single string of opaque bytes this changes it into a sequence of one to 32 uh fields of of opaque bytes so it becomes a tuple and then that enables us to have a message called subscribe namespace where you what you pass into subscribe namespace is a tuple subset and what that does is it essentially subscribes you to announce and unannounced messages to namespaces that match that prefix of tuples does that make any sense? I feel like it didn't make sense coming out of my mouth. Um, it does, I think. So, so, yeah. so would this be required to get announces, or this is just a no. way of filtering the announces? This is yeah. like if you. So, first of all, announce is not required for subscribe in our protocol, yeah. and subscribe namespace is not required to receive an announce either. However, if you have a case where like a publisher has a million tracks and it doesn't want to announce all of them, it 
might not. And you might have to sort of solicit it to send them to you by saying like, I would like this episode. So even if it has a very large set or it has a set to which only some people are authorized to find out about, you have to sort of you subscribe names as you're like, I am interested in learning about the announcements that look like this. And here's my authorization that says I'm allowed to, to, to receive that. And then once, once you do that, you get all you get you get announces for everything it knows about, and then in the future, as announces and, and unannounces happen, those are sent to you as well. Okay, Mo, very quickly. I think this is going the right direction, but uh, just remind people that the reason we had namespace and name was because it was originally a monolithic thing, and people wanted to break it up into tuples in order to do something you know unique with them. Now, if we actually have tuples, then I don't see the distinction between namespace and name anymore, and you should just make the whole thing tuples. And it doesn't. It, it's arbitrary to have a distinction between namespace and name now if it's already sharded into tuples. So um, well, I, I thought about that, and we'll also raise that point. Uh, I essentially because right now the one thing that we do have a distinction where announce has a namespace and subscribe has namespace and name, and we match subscribes to announces in a relay using a full match on namespace. And I didn't want to change that property. So it's sort of important to like explain like there's this is at least right now. Now, if we accept this, then I think if somebody wants to make the next PR and say, let's go full whole hog, all tuples, subset matching and relays and whatnot, like I think that's another distinction. But this is solving a specific problem we have now. So anyway, okay. that's kind of my all right. uh, we, we could pick this up later. Um, thanks to Mathis for for um, scribing once again. Uh, you are a, a gentleman. Um, we're meeting again in two weeks. And uh, watch the list for stuff about our next in-person interim and about this uh, issue that we're um, stuck on. All right? Have a good, Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good August, everybody. Thanks. Ciao.